With a big round of applause, we're going to bring on to the floor to talk for you, the queen of comedy, LaWanda. Give her a nice round. It was an old married couple, and they had been married three or four years. So this man, he goes to bed with his wife that night. He says, come on, baby. He said, give me some pussy. She said, hell no, motherfucker. Hell, every time I see you, fuck, 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 fuck. Hell, shit, I'm tired. <laughs> Ain't giving up no pussy tonight, baby. He said, oh, come on, baby, please give me some. I got a hard on. Hell no, motherfucker. Ain't giving you no pussy. So he got tired of wearing with it. He said, bitch, he said, you ain't give me no pussy. She said, hell no, I ain't going to give you no pussy. He said, if you don't give me some pussy tonight, I'm going downstairs, and I'm going to yell up dirty things at you. He said, I'm going to make you ashamed. I'm going to tell all the neighbors just what you are and just what you've been doing. She said, well, go on down and tell them. I don't give a damn. You can't make me shame. So he goes downstairs, and he hollers up to her. I fucked you before we were married. I fucked you before we were married. And she opened the window. She hollered back. And you wasn't the only one. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood walking through the forest, you know. And all at once, here come this big wolf. And he says, Little Red Riding Hood, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Red Riding Hood was so disgusted, she threw a basket down. She said, oh, shit, hell, ain't they fucking in these woods no damn <laughs> There were three little triplets started to school. And you know, on the first day of school, how the teacher have all the kids in line and asking their names and addresses, all the new kids. So the teacher said, what's your name, little boy? He said, my name is Joe Brown. So that's nice. What's your name, little boy? He says, my name is John Brown. So that's nice. So what's your name, little boy? He said, my name is Jerry Brown. He said, how come you talk so heavy? So your little boys look just alike. And say, but you talk, your voice is so different. Say, could you explain why your voice is so different? So the one with the heavy voice, he said, well, teacher. So you see, it was like this. So when we was born, so mama didn't have but two tits. And hell, I had to suck daddy's dick. <laughs> Vaseline is good as a first aid kit. But when it comes to busting a cherry, it ain't worth shit. <laughs> this motherfucker went to the market. <laughs> and this motherfucker stayed at home. And this motherfucker had roast beef. And this motherfucker had none. And this motherfucker beat the hell out of all the other motherfuckers and send them some bitches home. <laughs> A toast. The buccaneers have hairy ears, but they don't give a trifle. They hang their balls against the walls and shoot them down with rifles. <laughs> they wipe their ass on broken glass and laugh because it itches. They fuck their wives with butcher knives, the dirty son of a bitch. <laughs> there were two Mexicans walking down the country lane holding hands, Pedro and Rosita. So Pedro said to Rosita, he says, Rosita. She says, yes, Pedro. He said, let's go in the bushes and get a little bit. She said, no, Pedro. He asked her again, Rosita. Yes, Pedro. Let's go in the bushes and get a little bit. No, Pedro. So Pedro got tired of hearing that no shit. He said, I'm going to ask this bitch one more time. He said, Rosita. Say, yes, Pedro, let's go in the bushes and get a little bit. So she decided she'd go in the bushes and get a little bit. So when they come out, they walk down the country lane a long time. Neither one of them didn't say nothing. Pretty soon, Pedro, he couldn't stand the silence any longer. He said, Rosita, she said, yes, Pedro, when we were in the bushes getting a little bit, what was all those red spots all over your stomach? She says, oh, Pedro. That's a little thing the Americana call a syphilis. <laughs> he said, oh, for a moment you had me wetted. I thought it was the measles. <laughs> a toast to Hitler. 
To hell away with Hitler, the son of a bitch. May his ass ride off with the seven-year itch. May they beat his balls with a 10-pound hammer till his asshole whistle the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> oh, Grandpa was a hot shot, the hottest ever seen. And when he screwed the teenage girls, he never used Vaseline. <laughs> <Get my hands. laughs> this was a guy, he was in the service, and he got his arm cut off. So he goes to the doctor, he says, doctor, you know my arm is missing. He said, I need a new arm. He said, well, we don't have no male arms. He said, all we got is female arms. He said, well, hell, put a female arm on me. So they put a female arm on him. The doctor said, you come back in about three weeks and let me see how you're doing. Said, okay. <laughs> Comes back in about three weeks. The doctor says, how's your arm doing? He said, well, he says, doing okay. It fits fine. It don't give me no trouble. It don't hurt. But I ain't got but one problem. He said, what is it? He said, Ellie, every time I go to take a piss, this bitch don't want to let go. <laughs> Hell, when I was a born, I was a smart little bitch. Hell, the doctor picked me up by my legs here and he slapped me on the ass. Hell, that somebody thought I was going to cry. Hell, I didn't cry. I said, hey, motherfucker, take it easy. Hell, I was only put together with one screw. <laughs> It had to be you, black motherfucker. Had to be you, you old cocksucker. I wanted to fuck, you wanted to suck, and I wanted to screw. So get the hell out of here. You made me drunk off that beer. You had to be you, you black motherfucker. It just had to be you. It was a lady and her husband, they were real old people, you know. And she was sick, she had arthritis in her knees and everywhere else. And he was sick too. So this preacher come on the radio, she says, Brothers and sisters, I'm a divine healer. And all you got to do is just put one hand on the radio and one hand on your pain. He said, I can hear, I can hear you through the radio. So the lady said, you hear that, Paul? He said, yeah, by God, I hear. He said, well, come on, said, let's get healed. So they go to the radio. She put one hand on the radio and one hand on her knee because she had arthritis in her knee. He put one hand on the radio and one hand on his dick. She said, Paul. He said, what is it, Ma? Say, hell, he said he could heal the sick, not raise the dead. <laughs> You know, a long time ago down in Mississippi, when it was slavery time, they called us niggas, you know. I didn't give a damn how light and bright you was, you was a nigger. <laughs> right on. So this nigger was working for this white man. The white man said, nigger, so you know you've been working for me a long time. He said, yes, sir, boss. He said, and I hear all you niggas run right here in Mississippi talking about the niggas don't ever get no break. He said, but today, say, I'm going to give you niggas a break. He said, nigger, I'm going to put you on TV. I want you to tell the world how we treat the colored folks down here in Mississippi. The nigga said, boss, you sure you want me to tell them? I said, hell yeah, nigga. I said, I'm going to dress you up. Honey, boy, in brand new pair of overalls. <laughs> yeah. You know, the kind with the strap on the shoulder. The one strap across the shoulder. Honey, dressed this nigga up and took him down to TV station. I said, all right, nigga. I said, you're on the air. I said, you hooked up nationwide. The nigga was scared to go on. I said, boss, you sure it's all right? The hell yeah, nigga, go on. Tell them what we do, how we treat you colored folks out here in Mississippi. Boss, you sure you want me to tell them? Yeah, nigga, tell them. Speak up, speak up. Nigga say, help! <laughs>